What is going on, everyone? The 415ers podcast is live. Evan Giddings and Mark Grandy with you, as always, three times a week. Today, we're coming to you right after the conclusion of week eight, Mark, because the 49ers put together perhaps the, the best second half that I can recall from a Kyle Shanahan team in a long, long time. They went 31 to 14. They are four and four going into the bye. Feels good, baby. What's up, Mark? Oh, I, I'm going. I'm doing well, Evan. It's just a phenomenal game for the 49ers. It felt a, a little weird in that first half. Rams, they they go up, uh, but the Niners absolutely dominate the second half. They score the final 24 points of the game. They win the second half 21 to nothing. Uh, it was, you know, maybe the best half of football we've seen the 49ers play in a really, really, really long time. And to do it on the road against the Rams to improve to 3-0 in the division going into the bye. You sustained no major injuries. You checked off just about every single box you could have hoped for in this game. And the Niners uh, have not felt this good about themselves uh, probably since their win in Green Bay last year. So, um, yes, indeed. Feels great. That is correct. <laughs> And uh, can can the 49ers just play the Rams like 17 times a year <laughs> in the real. regular season? I mean, they, they might pull off an undefeated season if they do that. I, I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, I, look, I was pretty pessimistic heading into this game. I didn't feel as good about the first matchup as maybe some fans did. But, you know, I, I guess I just figured at some point the Rams would, would find a way to win a game against Kyle Shanahan. But for the last four years now, uh, they cannot say that they have. I mean, look, it was... In the second half, that was about as dominant a performance across 30 minutes of football that, that I've seen from, from any team, nevertheless, the 49ers. And, and that's why, you know, the last couple of weeks have been as frustrating as perplexing because the 49ers in this game arguably were, were just as banged up as they have been in any game this season. And you find out before the game, you don't have Debo Samuel. You find out you don't have Juwan Jennings. You don't have Kyle Juszczyk. You're missing some guys on offense as well as the defense. We'll talk about all of it. But what this comes down to is two words and one man, and that's Christian McCaffrey. I mean, Mark, <laughs> just what are you feeling when you see number 23 now in, the, in, the, in, in his first start, mind you, as a 49er? He put up one of the best performances by a 49er in the regular season that, that I can remember. Yeah, I mean, he was just absolutely incredible. He threw for a first-half touchdown, a, a beautiful throw to Brandon Ayuk. He caught just an incredibly acrobatic leaping grab uh, in the right corner of the end zone in the second half. And then, of course, he ran one in from a yard out after he ran from the 24-yard line all the way down to the one just a couple of plays before to set up that touchdown run. Uh, 94 yards on the ground, uh, of course, with that touchdown. He had eight catches for 55 yards and a touchdown, and then that 34-yard touchdown pass to Brandon Ayuk. Uh, there's a long list of kind of qualifiers for his performance um, that we, we can we can get into here. He's the first player since Ladanian Tomlinson in 2005 to have a passing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and a rushing touchdown in the same game. He's the third ever running back to do it. Walter Payton was the other. He's the fourth player overall to do it. One wide receiver did do it, David Patton, back in 2001. He's the first 49er player to ever accomplish that thing, and it took him, you know, just two weeks in his first official start. He's the first player in NFL history um, with a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, at least 30 passing yards, at least 50 receiving yards, at least 75 rushing yards. And he's the first player with 30 pass, 30 rush, and 30 receiving yards since, guess who, himself in 2018. So just an absolutely incredible performance from Christian McCaffrey. The Niners end up winning 31-14. to The final box score doesn't seem that close, but the Niners needed every single one of his touchdowns in this game to beat the Rams. And in a game without Debo Samuel, without Juwan Jennings, like you mentioned, uh, Christian McCaffrey could not have picked a, a better time to come out with, you know, maybe the signature moment of his career to this point. You could make that case because he's been relatively hidden in Carolina for much of his career, but he comes out on a big stage, the Niners against the Rams, a big matchup that a lot of people across the nation were watching, and he does that just 
absolutely phenomenal. There's there's not much else to say about it because you're kind of at a loss for words watching him perform in that game. Yeah, look, he was unbelievable. I mean, yeah. he had about 180 all-purpose yards. Uh, he did pretty much everything that I guess fans might expect from getting a player like Christian McCaffrey with the likes of Kyle Shanahan. And I know that people were maybe expecting that a week before against Kansas City. But with the two days or three days thereabouts, plus the full week of practice to be able to dial up what he did with Christian McCaffrey, I mean, look, I I just was kind of going back through some of the you know all-time regular season performances by a non-49ers quarterback, and it is absolutely up there. I mean, you can make the case. Look, I know Jerry Rice has, I think, 13 games with three or more touchdowns <laughs> against the 49ers. Wild. That's that's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, he had five in one game in 1990 against the Falcons. But since the new millennia, I mean, you're looking at maybe the best regular season performance by a San Francisco 49er. Yeah. Terrell Owens had a three-touchdown game in 2001. I know Jeff Wilson Jr. had a three-touchdown game in 2020 and a you know blowout win against New England. But for where this game came, and essentially his debut, I know he played against Kansas City, but as you mentioned, this is Christian McCaffrey's first start. For number 23, a.k.a. Run CMC, a.k.a. White Jesus, a.k.a. <laughs> I mean, the most creative player that I, I have seen in a long time going back to the Stanford days, for him to put his handprints all over this game, as you mentioned, doing it on a pass, on very Debo Samuel-looking type pass, Um doing it on the ground. I mean, I don't think I saw him fall backwards today, even on mm -hmm. his few runs for loss. He was always falling forward. He got every single yard, and he earned every single yard. And then through the air, obviously, everyone's going to point to the acrobatic catch in which he high points a nice ball by Jimmy Garoppolo in the end zone. But he just, he just unlocks a different dimension of this team and almost single-handedly beat the Los Angeles Rams. Like, that's how dominant his performance felt because there was no way, shape, or form that the Rams were going to stop him today. It felt like, I'm sure how a lot of teams feel trying to guard Cooper Cup or guard you know, Justin Jefferson or guard Derrick Henry, who had a 200-yard game today. Like That's the type of game-breaking ability that Christian McCaffrey brings to an offense. And for him to do it in his first start was miraculous and you know, just going through some of the box scores recently, it turns out not only it being a triple crown, having, you know, a passing, receiving and rushing touchdown in a game. But if you stack it up against all the best 49ers performances throughout the years and, and since 2000, it might just be number one. Well, some of the names you rattled off, Jerry Rice, uh, Terrell Owens, Jeff Wilson Jr. and Christian McCaffrey. I mean, one of those don't really fit with with where the others are in, in terms of NFL history. But I, Vernon, I mean, Vernon Davis never had three touchdowns in a game in the regular season. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. A I remarkable... mean, Debo Samuel has never caught or had three touchdowns in a game in the regular season. That's the only reason that Jeff Wilson Jr. is is in that is in that group because it doesn't happen. Yeah, like, I like know. that's that's the point. It does not happen, and it's it's remarkable. And I think when you consider. Obviously, you know, you're you're down some weapons. It probably means more touches for the guys that are in the game. But when you consider that you're playing without Debo Samuel, without Jawan Jennings, yes, you have fewer targets, fewer people you trust to get the ball to. But it also means that the Rams have fewer people to worry about. And that's a, a you know, a pretty good defense. I mean, Jalen Ramsey, for the most part, played a pretty good game. I mean, he probably should have forced two or three turnovers. He dropped an interception. He punched the ball out from Christian McCaffrey. The Niners did fall on it. Uh, but this is a, a good Rams defense for the most part. And the fact that Christian McCaffrey, who almost by himself for big stretches of this game, was able to do that was, was impressive. I mean, you consider the Niners receivers that they had suited up and active for this game today. Brandon Ayuk, he had a good game. We all know him. Ray Ray McLeod, generally we've seen on special teams this year, but he'll get in every so often for some snaps at wide receiver. Danny Gray, the speedster wide receiver, who we've seen just a couple of targets to this entire season. Then Willie Sneed and Tay Martin. That was your wide receiver group entering this game. And with that wide receiver group, the Niners put up 31 points. Christian McCaffrey scores three touchdowns, throws one. 
catches one and runs one in. I mean, impressive stuff for the 49er offense. I know we'll talk a lot about the rest of the offense and, and even the defense. They deserve their praise for that second half performance. But for Christian McCaffrey, who everyone in that stadium, which was, by the way, maybe about half, if not more, 49er fans, everyone knew that Christian McCaffrey was the focal point of the offense. He was going to get most of the touches, and yet he still did what few others have done in NFL history. All the more impressive considering what the Niners had to work with on the offensive side, and they still got that kind of performance. I mean, it is literally the stuff of legend. It's, it's hard to oversell how impressive this was. That's how good Christian McCaffrey was on Sunday against the Rams. And um, I don't know if this is what he does in his first start in his, what, 10th day as a 49er. I, I can only imagine what it's going to look like when he gets extremely comfortable in this offense. When he gets Debo Samuel on his side, uh, it's 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 going to look interesting. I'm excited to see it. But wow, what a performance from McCaffrey. Yeah, and I almost forgot. We were talking about it before, but like Frank Gore has never scored three touchdowns. <laughs> In a game, he now he had he had eighty five with one touchdown, but like the 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 sheer electricity that was, you know, reverberating through what looked like to be Levi's South today. Yeah. Uh, definitely want to give a shout out to all the 49ers fans there. I know I had a couple of friends in attendance. Uh, they were in, I think they were in the South End Zone among a sea of red. That was you couldn't pick them out. There were just so many 49ers fans. Yeah. at SoFi Stadium. A number I saw tickets distributed for the game at SoFi over seventy three thousand. The number I saw sold or, or purchased by 49er fans over forty three thousand. So based on those numbers, more than half were Niner fans. Yeah, look, I mean, it's it's a place that can be invaded, will be invaded, and uh, when the 49ers are performing like this today, should be invaded because, look, all right, big picture, they're back to four and four. Okay, they're five hundred heading into the buy. But based on the last couple of weeks, Mark, like this feel this is, I mean, I, I said it on the last pod on Friday, like this was a must win game for me. And I don't know if it, if it necessarily was, you know, I wasn't expecting it to be all Christian McCaffrey. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo had, I thought a really good game today outside of maybe one pass that, you know, you mentioned Jalen Ramsey should have intercepted. Um, I know Christian McCaffrey also, maybe had a couple of coughs that, yeah. that could have been collected by the Rams today that did not, that the 49ers took advantage of, but that, but that's also the difference. Like, and, and I don't know if it's all Christian McCaffrey. It certainly felt like it at times today, but the 49ers offense was, especially in that second half humming in a way that we had not seen it maybe all season long. And for them to be able to, put together sustained drives in which they kind of gave it to the Rams however they wanted it. Like, they, they could pick up a few on the ground. They could hit it through the air. We saw even, you know, a deep ball to Ross Dwelly um, yeah. ha get hauled in. I mean, the second half was, I don't know if it was quintessential 49ers football just because they didn't run the ball as much. But once we saw them get that lead back, Mark, to me, when it went, to, when it went from 17 to 14, when the script flipped, when Christian McCaffrey caught that nine-yard catch in the end zone, everything sort of changed. And we saw the 49ers team that when they play with a lead, they are incredibly lethal no matter who is on the other side, and especially against a Rams team that they're familiar against and now have beaten in eight straight regular season meetings. Um, this was the team today that even without the names that we've talked about, one could see becoming, you know, in a in a weak NFC in a in a top heavy NFC I should say could be a problem down the line. Yeah, and you mentioned the McCaffrey touchdown catch again that that nine yard touchdown catch where we'll talk more about it later. I imagine Garoppolo beautifully worked through his progressions and and made a really nice touch pass over the top of the defense to McCaffrey. Um, the next drive for the Rams was uh, you know a quick a quick punt. It was a third down and then quickly. Uh, the Niners brought a blitz kind of on a stunt. Greg Olson was talking about it all game long on the Fox broadcast. It was Fred Warner who came with the stunt and was able to get to uh, Matthew Stafford. And, and Nick Bosa helped finish it off for the sack to give the ball right back to the 49ers. They go back down, and that was the Christian McCaffrey one-yard touchdown run that put them in front by two scores. Um, but, but I calculated some of the numbers for the 49ers and Rams in the second half. Uh, let's, let's focus on the Niners on offense for a second. 
The Niners had 230 yards of total offense in the second half. That's about 100 more than they had in the first half. And of those 230 in the second half, 146 of them were through the air, 84 on the ground. But still, the Niners moved the ball pretty much uh, you know, through the air for the most part in that second half. The Rams, meanwhile, in the second half, 58 yards of offense. That's net yards of offense after 165 in the first half. Of those 58 net yards, 17 passing yards, net passing yards in the second half for the Rams and 41 on the ground. You limit an offense with Cooper Cup to 17 net passing yards in a half of football, and that is one of the more impressive things that an, a defense can do. 17 net, net yards of passing offense for the Rams in the second half. Matthew Stafford in that second half, 5 of 12 for 37 yards passing. You get to the 17 net yards by taking out the negative yards on those sacks by the 49ers, and that's how you get to 17. But incredible defensive performance for the 49ers in that second half, and their offense clicked into gear, as you mentioned as well.